Hello and welcome to Cornwall. My name is Andy Paramore, this is Andy's Cornish Creations and in this video it's going to be another little animal one and uh, it's another log and it's the, um, it's the, it's the off cut of, of this log um, there's a piece out here and I've cut that off and I'll be turning it <coughs> into a little mouse so I'll be putting a, a tenon on it, mounting it on the chuck, getting it on the lathe and, uh, and turning a little, little mouse from it. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get it on the, uh, on the lathe and get started. Thanks. Right. I'm just turning it to round. Um, I'm using a, a 3 8 inch or about 10 mil spindle gouge. You could use a roughing gouge, would probably be uh, preferable, but uh, it saves getting another tool out and it does it perfectly well. This is two times speed. This little mouse can be made in, I think it can be made in 20 minutes quite easily. Uh, it, I did it in a little over 20 minutes but I was uh, filming and what have you. If you got set up properly um, you could do it in 20 minutes. Not that speed's any issue. Here, just turning the tenon on. So I'm using a, this is a, um, about a three quarter inch uh, skew chisel that I'm using uh, just to put a, a dovetail on the end of the tenon. I'll turn it round, put it in a chuck, bring up tailstock support. Uh, I always like to have tailstock support whenever possible. I'm just marking the top and the bottom of the mouse. And here's my uh, record power uh, narrow parting tool, thin parting tool. It's a nice little tool. It doesn't have a lot of reach, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, use it for a, for massive projects. But uh, but for little things like this, it's great. The lathe, I think it's on about uh, 1050 RPM, but uh, throughout this video I'm only really using two speeds, it'll be 1000 to 1200 and, um, and, a, um, and a 500 speed when sanding and doing some of the more delicate work when I don't want the speed up so high. Just forming the shape, so rounded at the base or bottom of the mouse, and uh, and this is going to be the snout end, the nose end. I turn the tool rest at an angle, so I can just run my hand along it, and it helps just keep it straight. And I'm just fine tuning the the shape. There, you can see that it's parted off from the Tailstock support is not necessary anymore. It's held in the uh, held in the chuck, and I, here I'm just forming the uh, the nose for the mouse. My uh, my hand gets in the way a bit here, but you get the idea. Thank you. 
this is a, a one inch skew chisel and uh, I like to use this for um, it, it, when you've gone over it with the um, spindle gouge you do tend to leave little ridges and troughs in there and uh, and with this having the width it uh, it just flattens out the uh, the high points and uh, it, it's an easy way of getting a much better finish here I'm using the parting tool again just to take it down to probably about, about 10 mil or quarter inch something like that oh, here's a little reminder to subscribe and like and ring the notification bell and then sanding start off with a I think I st actually I start off with a 120 on this one because it, uh, it, uh, it wasn't rough at all so I start off with a 120 and uh, sand it down to 400 grit that one's a 240 which flies out of my hand and 320 grit it didn't need a lot of sanding it's only a small item and it's uh, it wasn't too rough this is abrasive paste it puts a nice quite quite a nice shine on it Wipe off any excess paste. That's starting to look really lovely now. And then finally, some wood wax 22, just to give it a final polish and a protective coating. And this uh, this piece of wood, it's it's been uh, seasoned for a while, just just stuck in a corner of the workshop, probably for about a year. Uh, so it's it's not fully dried out I haven't tested it or anything but it's not fully dried but the wax um, coating will slow down any dr uh, the drying process of anything that's uh, still moist on there inside it here I'm using a sharpie to mark where the eyes are going and then where the ears are going it's not critical. You can basically put them wherever you like, but uh, probably on a mouse, they're probably further over to the side than I've done them. But uh, I think they look uh, somehow look a bit cuter with them closer together. And the ears have more or less lined up behind the eyes, and put them about 10, uh, 10 mil, or about five eighths inches behind. This is a little center punch. I like to use this. It does really help when you put in the uh, when you approach with the uh, drill. It gives you something to for the drill to drill bit to go into instead of skating across the surface of the wood. does move a little bit and I just have to readjust it. I think this one's a that was a 4.5 mil drill. This for the ears which are going to be made out of leather and then for the eyes I will be using a four millimeter drill for the little plastic eyes that I'm using on this one just for just for speed I could make them out of ebony like I did on the last one uh, but uh, I've got, uh, got 
very limited workshop time for this one. You can see the fires going in the background down there. It's uh, not so much cold, but uh, it's really damp. plastic eyes they do always look they do look good those little eyes really simple to do here's little pieces of leather use one as a template and just uh, cut around it a bit like a teardrop shape and the pointed end is uh, the end that will be folded over and stuck into the uh, into the hole on the mouse again you can make the ears smaller or bigger depending on how you want it to look I just uh, picked a random size that I thought might look okay All right, so I apply a little bit of super glue at the bottom there then try and just sort of roll it over it's a bit tricky and it does go all over your fingers and then apply a bit of um, accelerator and the super glue, glue goes off straight away with that stuff it's, uh, it's really useful bit of glue around the point and pop it in the hole the hands get in the way a bit here I use this little tool to try and just poke it down a bit further into the hole Same process with the second one. Just try and make it the same as the uh, as the first, if at all possible. Again, it doesn't really matter because uh, it just gives it uh, a bit of character if it's uh, if it looks a little bit quirky. one you can see it's slightly different I'm just sort of pulling it apart a bit just opening it up so that it uh, it looks like the other one it looks like the other ear put a little bit of accelerator on just to make sure it's gone off so I'm going to start I'm going to spin it up a minute, and I'll put the ears flying out. Okay, I'm going to part off the mouse now, uh, and I'm using a skew chisel to do it. Um, if you were to do it with the parting tool, you would be left with a quite a rough finish on it, and um, and to save on sanding. What I like to do with these is use the skew chisel and uh, and it leaves a really, because you're rubbing on the bevel, it leaves a, a really smooth finish which needs very little sanding. And um, so I, I like to do it this way with the, uh, with the skew. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Um, I'll turn it round. There, there's very little sanding to do. 
actually is quite a nice finish. So I get a couple of pieces, one's um, 240 grit, that one that I'm using there, just to take off that little sharp point, and the other one's a 320 grit, and just, just go over the bottom with the uh, first one and the other. sort of rolling it a little bit as I'm going over it so they don't leave a flat spot. Yeah, a little bit of uh, abrasive paste and then some wood wax 22 which is on the on the rag which I keep in the uh, in the tin. Give it a little rub to get it into the wood and then a soft cloth just to buff it up. And there we have it. Nice and simple. But it doesn't stand up. So it's over to the um, belt sander. I'm filming it with one holding the camera with one hand rather than setting up the tri tripod just for this little bit. So I position it how I want it to sit and then just sort of drop it down onto the onto the belt sander. So whatever position I've got the mouse held in is the position that it will be sat when it's flat down on the on the deck. Right. Just finding the lining up the center and make sure that it's not going to be too close to the bottom, so that it uh, so that the tail gets in the way of uh, when it's sat down. Use the punch again, make it easy for drilling. And this one, this is a through, is it? I think it's a two mil or two point five mil drill bit. But basically it's the same size as the little cord that I've got here. Which fits in just nicely. So I'll pop a bit of super glue on again. accelerator and that's it just put a little twist on it there you go okay so there we have it uh, all finished. A little mouse. It's got a little little tail on. It's still still got a little bit of the bark on the uh, on the side of the mouse, which uh, which which looks quite nice. I think it's a, like a little patch on the side. Um, it's got a little nose. I could do that black, or I could just leave it natural. I think I might leave it. Uh, the less I do to these little things, I, th I think the better they look. Um, the tails, just a bit of um, sort of. Uh, faux leather um, wire kind of thing, little leather ears and uh, it's got the plastic eyes on again I'm afraid but uh, they are really convenient um, and yeah nice little project really easy um, you know a sort of beginner project uh, perfect, uh, for, perfect for a beginner because uh, basically all you're turning is a sort of a teardrop shape and uh, if you can manage that and handle a drill and, uh, and get a few bits and bobs from the craft store then, uh, then you can make these as easy as anything. Um, the flat on the bottom helps it to sit up and uh, yeah, yeah, a really easy project, 
and, and, and fun too. Um, as, uh, as I said before, I did a little prototype with this guy. He's got no uh, sort of nose, it just comes to a point at the end. Uh, he hasn't got a tail yet, but I'll pop him one up. Uh, um, but yeah, they're uh, again, they're, they're cute little chaps. And um, uh, they're always going up to mischief. Come out of the way, come on. And um, so, anyway, if you were. If you enjoyed the video, give it that thumbs up, uh, share and uh, subscribe if you can. It's going really well still and uh, I like it, keep it going that way. And, uh, and please leave a comment. I do, uh, I do enjoy reading all the comments and, uh, and I do try to... Um, some of the questions I answer if I can and, uh, and any sort of notes about how the videos are doing are done or how I could improve them I to try to incorporate that into uh, into my videos so uh, it's well worth making a comment if you have something to say um, well anyway from a uh, it's been raining again I'm afraid I know I'm not doing much for the Cornwall tourist industry but uh, it's been a really horrible day today <laughs> And um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm not sure what the next one's going to be, but it'll be something fun. It might be a, something a bit different from an animal. <laughs> but I haven't got a, bit, a lot of time this weekend, and uh, and work and everything just sort of it does get in the way. <laughs> and uh, so this is it. Anyway, I might have a bit more time on the next one. So, from Cornwall, my name is Andy Paramore, this is Andy's Cornish Creations, and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.